My weird school fast facts, mummies, myths, and mysteries. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pellot. Part two, ancient Greece. Greece was a world superpower almost four thousand years ago. The Greeks created the foundations of modern civilization, developing new ideas for government, science, art, literature, architecture, theater, and sports. Lots of these ideas are still with us today. I saw Greece once. It was cool. They had a car right on the stage. Not Greece, Arlo. Greece. I knew that. I was just yanking your chain, Andrea. I know the Greeks invented all kinds of cool stuff. Did you know they invented birthday candles? It's true. It all began when people brought cakes with candles on them to the temple of Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. Are you making that up, Arlo? No. The Greeks also invented the first vending machine. People would drop a coin in, and holy water would come out. Really? Yup. And get this: Are you sitting down? This is the most amazing thing of all. The Greeks invented socks. Yes, socks. Around 700 BCE, some guy named Hesiod wrote poems about what it was like to be a shepherd. In one of them, he suggested wearing sandals and a cloth made of wool or animal hair. That's very interesting, but I think we should talk about the more important innovations that came from ancient Greece. I think socks are pretty important. Great Greek innovations. How about democracy? That's pretty important. In the sixth century BCE, the Greeks developed a new system of government. Every citizen had the right to vote and participate in politics. In fact, the word "idiot" in Greek meant a person who didn't participate in politics, and the word "democracy" comes from the Greek word "demokratia," which means the rule of the people. A poet named Solon was elected ruler of Athens in 594 BCE. He usually gets credit for planting the seeds of democracy. He also freed Athenian citizens who'd been enslaved because they couldn't pay their debts, and made it illegal for any Athenian to be a slave. The Greeks invented the Olympics too. They loved sports. Kids played all kinds of games. They juggled. They played a piggyback game called Ephedrismus. They played a game like jacks using the knuckle bones of sheep or goats. They played a passe ball in which you tried to throw a ball through a hole in a board, sort of like basketball. For the ball, they used a pig bladder. In 776 BCE, the Olympics began in Greece, and they were held every four years for the next thousand years. Athletes from city-states all over Greece came to compete. If two city-states were at war, they would have a ceasefire during the Olympics. Women weren't allowed to compete in the Olympics. No fair. They weren't even allowed to attend. That's because the athletes competed without any clothes on. What? They'd run around naked? Yup. In fact. The word gymnasium comes from the Greek word gymnos. It means naked. Before a competition, the athletes would cover themselves in olive oil. Then, at the end of the day, they would scrape off the oil and their sweat. All that goopy stuff would be collected and sold as medicine. People would rub it on their skin to relieve their aches and pains. Ugh. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. That's only because you haven't read the rest of this book yet.
The winner of each competition in the Olympics was given a crown of leaves to wear on his head. That's it? They won leaves? No medals? No money? No Wheaties box? There were no Wheaties in those days, Arlo. The Greeks were pioneers of architecture. Whenever you see a building with tall columns, that's based on Greek buildings. The most famous temple of ancient Greece is the Parthenon. It's on a hill called the Acropolis in the city of Athens, and it was built for the goddess Athena. The Greeks were great artists, or sculptors anyway. They created thousands of statues. They also enjoyed painting, but hardly any of their paintings survived because they were made on wood panels or walls that got destroyed. The one place where Greek paintings survived was on pottery and ceramics. In fact, Greek pottery artists were some of the first to sign their names to their artwork. The Greeks were great scientists, too. They figured out the size of the Earth and that the Sun was the center of the solar system. They studied light and sound. They figured out how a pulley and levers work. Many of the ancient Greek discoveries and inventions are still used today. Hippocrates was a famous Greek scientist. Before he came along, people thought diseases were punishment from the gods. But Hippocrates studied the human body and discovered there were scientific reasons for ailments. Even today, new doctors take the Hippocratic Oath, in which they promise to uphold certain rules of medicine. Archimedes was a Greek mathematician and inventor who created all kinds of cool stuff. He invented the odometer, which measures distance. He came up with the idea of the planetarium. He improved the catapult. He invented a screw that would lift water and pump it out of a leaking ship. He even invented a heat ray that used mirrors to reflect light and set enemy ships on fire. Archimedes was cool. Then, of course, there were the famous Greek philosophers who got people thinking about the big questions of life, like who are we and how can we be happy? And why do farts smell? Not that Arlo. Socrates was a philosopher who lived from 470 to 399 BCE. He claimed that happiness came from being a mortal person rather than owning lots of stuff. His ideas were so revolutionary at the time that he was considered to be a traitor. Socrates was put on trial, convicted by a jury, and sentenced to death by drinking poison. Ouch! Plato was a student of Socrates who tried to help people see the truth and strive to be good and fair. He believed men and women were equally intelligent, and he was one of the first to say that women should receive the same education as men. Plato started a school called the Academy, where his students debated issues like these. The school was still going almost 900 years after Plato died. Finally, Aristotle was a student of Plato's. He was interested in animals, anatomy, biology, and science. He's known as the father of zoology. Aristotle may have been a genius in his day, but that doesn't mean he was always right. He thought that goats could be male or female depending on which way the wind was blowing. What? And that guy was supposed to be a great thinker? Yes, the Greeks were great writers, too. Homer was famous for his epic poems, such as the Iliad and the Odyssey. And you've probably heard of Aesop's famous fables, such as the boy who cried wolf and the tortoise and the hare. Some phrases we still use today, sour grapes, crying wolf, and lion's share, came from Aesop's fables. 
That was long before the invention of the printing press, of course. In those days, stories had to be carefully written down and copied by hand on scrolls. A giant library was built at Alexandria to store them all. They say it had half a million scrolls, but we'll never know for sure. In 48 BCE, the library burned down and was lost to history for all time. Greek writers invented three kinds of plays: comedy, tragedy, and satire. The actors wore tragic masks to show sad expressions and comic masks when their character was happy. The actors' voices would be amplified by the shape of the mask, which acted like a megaphone. Some Greek plays that were written thousands of years ago are still being performed today. Warriors and warriors. So we know the Greeks were great writers, artists, scientists, inventors, athletes, and philosophers. But you know what they were really good at? Were? How did you know? It's in the heading, a few lines up. There were around fifteen hundred city-states in ancient Greece, and they were constantly fighting one another. Sparta and Athens fought one war, the Peloponnesian War, for twenty-seven years. The only time the Greeks seemed to stop fighting with each other was when they were fighting against somebody else. I think the most interesting war was the Trojan War in the twelfth century B.C.E. For ten years, Greece was at war with Troy, a Mediterranean city-state. Then, according to legend, the Greeks came up with a great idea. They built a giant horse out of wood. It was big enough so that a bunch of soldiers could hide inside it. One night, they wheeled this Trojan horse over to Troy's walls and left it there. The people of Troy thought it was a gift, and they wheeled it inside. Bad idea. In the middle of the night, Greek soldiers snuck out of the horse and took over the city. Genius! Man, those toy dopes would fall for anything. But usually, the Greeks were fighting Persia. The Persian Wars lasted over forty years, from four hundred ninety-two to four hundred forty-nine BCE. What happened was that King Darius the First of Persia. Invaded Greece at the Bay of Marathon, which was about twenty-six miles from Athens. The Persians had more soldiers, but the Greeks were great fighters. Around six thousand Persians were killed in the battle, and then the Greek army quickly marched the twenty-six miles to Athens to protect the city. A messenger named Phidippides ran ahead to herald the arrival of the troops. That's why today a race of that distance is called a marathon. In the end, Greece won the war when Alexander the Great defeated Persia. That guy must have had a lot of confidence to call himself the Great. We should talk about Alexander the Great. Remember Aristotle in 343 BCE, King Philip II of Macedonia. Asked him to tutor his son Alexander. Aristotle spent years teaching the boy, who grew up to be one of the great military commanders in history. Alexander became the king of Greece and conquered Asia Minor, Turkey, Syria, Egypt, Babylonia, and Persia. He never lost a battle. He was ready to conquer India when his army revolted. The soldiers wanted to go home to their families. Alexander gave in to them, but on the way home, he suddenly got sick and died. He was just thirty-two. It's a mystery what he died from, but some people suspected that he was poisoned. After Alexander died, the Greek Empire he built was divided up between his generals. They didn't get along with each other, and gradually the empire fell apart. It was conquered by Rome in the year 146 BCE, and that was the end of the Greek Empire. Gods and goddesses. 
Arlo, do you know who was more powerful than Alexander the Great? Uh, Alexander the Greater? Alexander the Greatest? Alexander the Greaterest? No, it was the Greek gods. I knew that. Like the Egyptians, the ancient Greeks worshipped lots of gods and goddesses. They came from Gia, the earth, and Uranus, the sky. To honor the gods, temples were built in every town. Also, animals would be sacrificed to the gods. Sheep, goats, pigs, cows, even fish and birds. The king of all the gods was Zeus. He lived on Mount Olympus, a high mountain in northern Greece. Zeus could control the weather. He threw his thunderbolt like a spear. His daughter was Athena, the goddess of wisdom. The city of Athens is named after her. Today, it's the capital and the largest city in Greece. Zeus's brother was Poseidon. He ruled the seas, and he was also the god of earthquakes and horses. Poseidon had a long beard and blue hair. He drove a golden chariot that was pulled by beasts that were half horse and half snake. Zeus's son was Hermes. He was the messenger god, and he also invented music. The legend goes that a few minutes after he was born, Hermes picked up a tortoise shell and tied strings across it. Then he plucked the strings to make a sound. This was the first musical instrument called a lyre. By the way, the word music comes from the muses, goddesses of the arts. Ares was the god of war. He was considered to be a troublemaker, a coward, and a bully. Aphrodite was the goddess of love. She and her son Eros would make people and gods fall in love with each other. Ugh, you said the L word. Disgusting. That's silly, Arlo. Hera was the queen of the gods. She was very beautiful and also vain about her looks. One time, she got really angry because she lost a beauty contest to Athena and Aphrodite. Another time, a queen claimed that she was more beautiful than Hera, so Hera turned the queen into a crane. That wasn't nice. These are all ancient myths, of course. Myths are traditional stories about so-called historical events. There are lots more Greek myths and lots more gods and goddesses to talk about. But we'll let you look them up on your own. We're not going to do everything for you. More weird fast facts about ancient Greece. When we have a jury trial these days, there are usually 12 people in the jury. Do you know how many people made up a jury in ancient Greece? 500! Women were considered to be second-class citizens. They weren't allowed to vote, own land, or inherit property. No fair! Men and women ate separately, and they even stayed in separate parts of a house. The Andron was the room where men entertained their friends and business people. The Janakin was where women worked on weaving, spinning, and looked after their children. Marriages in ancient Greece were arranged by the parents. Most girls got married when they were about 15. That may seem young, but then again, most people only lived to be 35 or 40. Girls didn't have to go to school in ancient Greece. No fair. Boys shouldn't have to go to school either. But boys started school when they were seven, except in the city-state of Sparta. There, the whole educational system focused on war. Boys left home at six years old to go to military school. Girls in Sparta also learned to be warriors and were taught how to kill. Spartans believed that strong women would make strong babies. Also, while the men were away fighting a war, the women might have to defend the city. 
The Spartans were also famous for torturing prisoners, enemies, criminals, and anybody they didn't like. That's horrible. I don't approve of this violence. What do you have against violins? Not violins, Arlo. Violence. Those two words sound way too much alike, if you ask me. Do you know what a unibrow is? That's when somebody's eyebrows go all the way across their head with no break in the middle. In Greece, people with a unibrow were considered to be smart and beautiful. Women would even draw a line between their eyebrows to make it look like they had a unibrow. In ancient Greece, fat men were thought to be really good leaders. Do you know how the Greeks showed that they loved somebody? They'd throw an apple at them? Yes, throwing an apple was even used as a way to propose marriage. Would you ever throw an apple at me, Arlo? Maybe, but only because I want to hit you with an apple. Do you know how we write from left to right and some languages are written from right to left? Well, in ancient Greece, it was common to write one line from left to right and the next line from right to left. That's weird. Sometimes they would use salt for money. That's where the phrase not worth his salt comes from. Did you know that the word dinosaur means a terrible lizard in Greek? This is not a riddle. Why didn't they eat beans in ancient Greece? Is this going to be gross, Arlo? No, they didn't eat beans because they thought beans contained the souls of the dead. That's interesting. And I thought you were going to say something gross. Who, me? Actually, in Sparta, they used to drink soup that was made from salt, vinegar, and blood. Ugh, gross. No more gross stuff, Arlo. Oh, then I guess you don't want to know what doctors did in ancient Greece. Well, that's important information. Kids need to know about that. Okay, you asked for it. Hippocrates believed that each bodily fluid had a certain taste, and the taste would tell the doctor if something was wrong with the patient. I don't like where this is going. So, for example, P was supposed to taste like fig juice. So if you went to the doctor, he would take a sip of your pee. If it wasn't tart enough, he knew you had a problem. I'm sorry I asked. The doctor also might eat a piece of your earwax or lick your vomit to see how sweet it was. I guess that's why so few Greeks went into the field of medicine. Don't you want to know how the Greek doctors cheated scars around people's eyes? No, I don't. They rubbed crocodile poop on them. I think I have to leave the room. Hey, I didn't make this stuff up. By the way, that reminds me of something. Toilet paper didn't exist in ancient Greece. Do you want to know what they used instead? No. Come on, you know you want to know. I really don't want to know, Arlo. I thought you wanted to know everything. I don't want to know that. Okay, if you insist, I'll tell you. Instead of toilet paper, the Greeks used stones. No way! Yes way! They kept a pile of rocks in their bathroom, and they had a saying, three stones are enough to wipe, because, you know, they didn't want people to waste stones. I get it. Okay, I'm out of here. Maybe things weren't as disgusting in ancient Rome. Oh boy, are you in for a surprise?